Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Jacobs, uh, and I'm going to be talking about browsing Twitch TV from Emacs today. Uh, but really, the subtext of this talk is a, about the fact that you can actually use Emacs to create these little user interfaces that will be sort of familiar and, and delightful for Emacs users. Uh, so as I said, I'm Aaron. I'm from Toronto, and I've been using Emacs for about five years. Uh, like many other people, I got into Emacs due to org mode and Bagot. And that's mostly what keeps me an Emacs user to this day. Now, uh, the obvious question is like, why on earth did I actually want to do this? Um, and in fact, I did have a pretty practical reason. Um, in 2015, late 2015, I think, uh, I basically damaged the GPU and the computer that I had at the time and I couldn't afford a new one. And I was basically told by the repair shop that I could use my computer in its fixed format, that I could basically never run it hot. Uh, and at the time, if people remember, um, decoding HTML video in a browser was exactly the kind of thing that made your CPU run hot and your fans scream and so on. Um, which was really disappointing to me because at the time I was really into live streaming esports content from Twitch. And so I kind of wanted to retain a way of doing this. Um, for any of you that don't know, Twitch TV is like the largest sort of live streaming platform out there or, or very one of the very largest uh, and it has a really sort of video gaming sort of core culture although it's used for other things um, so it actually turned out to be fairly easy to not do the whole html video thing um, there were programmers programs sorry called live streamer and now that program, there's a fork called stream link that everyone uses and you can basically pass it a, a url for twitch and it, it'll stream that content to PLC or MVB, which looks like this, basically. And the, the difference in efficiency for these programs is like pretty remarkable, you know, from like 70% of your CPU down to like five, especially in 2015. Uh, the problem with doing this is like, you need to actually have this URL and know who's streaming and all that kind of stuff. Um, in other words, you need the sort of search and discovery functionality of Twitch TV, which I didn't have if I was trying to avoid using the website. So I wanted to have a way of doing this exact search and discovery kind of stuff. And Twitch has public API, so I knew that I could do this. And then it actually occurred to me that maybe I could do this using Emacs, right? You could make HTTP requests and parse JSON from Emacs, right? Um, yes, we can do this, as it turns out. Uh, there's, a, there's a pretty famous uh, YouTube video, at least I think it's famous, and has quite a large number of views, um, by Chris Jenkins, who, who basically writes a Spotify client for Emacs in like 15 minutes flat um, using built-in functionality in Helm. Uh, and I basically was able to emulate an approach like that, and pretty soon I was, it was essentially able to get Emacs talking to these APIs. Uh, but basically, you know, you don't want to like dump this information into a scratch buffer. You like actually want some kind of user interface. Uh, and what I quickly realized is that um, Emacs actually has a bunch of built-in stuff for doing little UIs. Um, if anyone's used the widgets.l package, uh, you can make like full GUIs and buffers with like buttons and drop-down menus and all this kind of stuff. But even for more simple things, there can often be powerful building blocks. So if you've ever used list packages or list processes, um, you might recognize this kind of interface. Uh, they're both powered by tabulated list mode, which, as it turns out, you can really easily plug into yourself. So this is like 10 lines of ULISP or something to make this, to basically turn these API results into a uh, um, list buffer, essentially. And if you combine this with things like key maps and modes, you could probably make a pretty compelling interface. Um, more broadly in the community, uh, uh, you have search and completion frameworks, uh, notably Hel Helm and Ivy. Um, and I realized that that is essentially what I really wanted, is the ability to sort of like see what was currently happening, but also have the ability to search. Um, so I ended up pursuing using Helm. Uh, the reason for this at the time was that Helm allowed you to have more than one kind of um, sort of module inside of here, uh, whereas I, that was not possible using Ivy. That, that may have changed in the years since. I was also able to just piggyback on Twitch's, or sorry, on Emacs's uh, great support for things like IRC, so you can use Twitch chat from this um, interface and so on. 
Uh, now I did hit road bumps, as you might expect. Uh, the URL.l package uh, that originally I used to implement this was like super buggy. Um, not like all the time, but but certainly it was surprisingly unreliable. Um, although I think it has improved in the years since. Um, so what I ended up doing is basically following in the footsteps of the excellent Lfeed package, which is an RFeed RSS reader. Uh, and I just called out to curl directly when possible, and this massively improves stability. Uh, I personally don't know if the HTTP request sort of <laughs> landscape has improved in Emacs sense. Uh, I hope so, and um, maybe it would be possible to have more ergonomic and less uh, buggy clients in the future. Uh, the other piece of this is that I essentially wrote this code that was just like slung together like four years ago, and I've been using it, I think, not every day, but like probably every other day for like four years since. And no code lasts unless it gets some love. So for example, um, Livestreamer essentially got abandoned by its maintainer, and then they moved to Streamlink, and then they got things like the Loth support, which broke unless you implemented that functionality. So I had to work around that. And then, you know, the Twitch API that I was actually using was like deprecated like two years ago or something. Um, and I, I quite comically, I used to get these emails from the, the Twitch API folks being like, you're one of the last holdouts. We know it's you. We can see your API, API key is still being used. Um, and then finally, they actually literally turned the API off on September 12th. Um, so in order to actually get this talk, uh, I had to migrate to the new API in order to get things working again. Luckily, that was not too hard. Uh, yeah, and as I said, I've been using this little bit of Ellipse almost every day for more than four years. Uh, and the code has always been open source, but I don't think anyone has ever used it. Uh, if you're interested, try it out. File some bugs. Uh, it's not currently on Melpa, but um, I'm happy to sort of move towards getting it there. And now, of course, I should give a demo. Uh, this is my Emacs. Um, so uh, it doesn't actually come on with a built in key binding for using the program, so I just have my own. Basically, I'll just invoke it. And it looks like this. So there's also basically the ability to narrow results. Um, in particular, I only really follow League of Legends, so I, I have it set up by default to like only narrow to League of Legends results. Uh, but you can see that you know you can see streamers that you're following current who are currently online. And, you know, these are the actions you can use. You can open Twitch chat for them and follow or unfollow streams. You can open them in live streamer, and of course you can navigate to them in a browser. Um, so it's actually, as it turns out, it's like the League of Legends World Finals right now, and that's currently being broadcast, so to give you a sense of what this looks like, if we use Livestreamer. Um, I also wrote like a little major mode that like captures the output of Livestreamer and like gives you nice navigation, and you can close and open streams and resize them and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's, yeah. And there you go. Hopefully that was no spoilers if you follow League of Legends. Anyway, um, if you're interested in this project, yeah, check it out on GitHub. Uh, if you're interested in me, uh, you can find me on GitHub or on Twitter. Uh, I also blog, but I mostly blog about R, though occasionally I do discuss EMAS to topics. Anyway, thanks for watching.